to engineering management for Monday. Don't you love Mondays? Actually, you should look forward to Mondays. We have engineering management class. All right, so today, uh, first agenda is to go over the midterm. And then I recently was made aware of by a student, actually, that we don't have the CSLO essay in there either, which I didn't know about. So before next week, I'll have the CSLO essay posted for you, and I'll go over that. Uh, but the midterm is the newest item that's uh, been listed out there. And I want to go over the midterm because, it, ironically, it actually works in well with today's subjects. Today's subjects that I'm going to talk about, um, I have two subjects in my software development and software planning, software development life cycles, which every engineering manager should be familiar with. It's a crossover with software engineering field. And then also the concept of using artificial intelligence and decision making in, uh, in terms of um, management decisions made through artificial intelligence as well. So that would be topic number two. And topic number one actually fits in with the midterm. And the midterm, as you posted out here, let me clarify a few things for you. You're writing a proposal. Not, you, don't have, you can take a couple of different approaches with this. You can do a project plan, or you can just write, this is what we're going to do. So you're going to document out somehow how you're going to implement this system. So let me talk about the system first, and then I'll give you some more information on this. So you're going to complete the following exercise. Your total assignment submission should be three to four pages in length, double space. You probably will end up going longer than this. It's okay to go longer. You just don't want to go shorter. So maybe I should put your total assignment submission should be a minimum of three to four. So at least, at least three to four pages, which means you can go more. If you're doing any diagramming or if you're doing any, like, uh, tables and things, you probably will end up going more. Um, so what are you going to do? So your topic, here's the topic summary. So implementing a new software or hardware system can be quite a challenge. Imagine that you're working for a company that has a traditional style human resources department. I picked this department because a lot of people are familiar with human resources. Just as an employee, you might be familiar with it. So if you're not familiar with it, don't go out and research and learn about human resources. Um, just take your common knowledge about the department. And then, um, so they have, um, the company has a traditional style human resources department. It doesn't offer any online services via the internet. So the company has decided to create an employee self-service system. And it's going to use internet technologies. So you're going to write the analysis of the steps you would take to solve this problem and create this new system. So think about the system analysis and design concept as well, and I'm going to talk about that today. And as well as the software development methodologies and practices. I'm going to talk about that today as well and give you plenty of ideas. And you can be creative in your analysis and your response. There's no right or wrong answer to this as long as you spec out and give me a system. So what do you need to do? Uh, so, you know, engineering manager, I'm the company, and I need an HR system that does employee self service Do it for me. You're not going to do it yourself. Hopefully, you're not going to do it yourself. You're not going to. In fact, the less work you can do, the better. So, as an engineering manager, this happens to you all the time, or actually, as any manager, if you're going to be the person in charge, especially of an engineering kind of thing, depending upon the software engineering, hardware engineering, depending upon what field it's in, they're going to say, you know, Bob, put together this thing. So, what are you going to do? You're going to tackle the problem with a solution. So, what are you going to? So, you have to gather resources, figure out what we have. Are we going to build it in-house? Are we going to outsource it? Probably, you're not going to have very much to write on in three or four pages unless you really get into outsourcing, you know. But imagine you're probably going to want to build it in-house. And even if you do build it, even if you do outsource it, you still got to test it in-house. So think about, put yourself in the shoes of an engineering manager. This is a live project that you have to do. You can use any format that you want in your summary. It's a proposal report. So you're going to put together, here's a summary of the system I'm going to build, maybe. This is one approach to doing it. And here are all the resources I need. Here's the money. Because you have to cost it out. How much money are you going to need? How much manpower are you going to need? How long is it going to take you to do it? When can we expect this system? What system features are you going to put in here? And how are you going to build this thing? So imagine teamwork. Imagine dividing out tasks. You do not have to put together a Microsoft project for this. If you're a project manager, you're probably already familiar with what I'm talking about. If you're not, then don't worry about it. You don't have to put together a project report for this. You also don't have to write any source code. I would, I would, 
I would look at you funny if you were a manager and you came to me with source code and you, you, you told me all the, I don't care about your source code. I don't want to see how you're going to build this. When are we going to have this system? Where's, you know, how are we going to get to this system? So tackle it like a real problem, actually, and then you'll have an easier way of figuring it out. You can't Google the answer to this either. It's not on the Internet. <laughs> I mean, unless somebody has put together a project proposal for a human resource system, and I don't want to see somebody else's project proposal, I want to see yours. Um, so you can make up things, because, you know, for example, how do you know what company you're working for? Make up the company. How do you know what resources you have? Well, you know, you could pretend like you have all the talent in-house, or maybe you can go out and hire. Maybe you're a startup company, and you only have, and then you're going to basically explain to the reader of this document, you know, that this is what we're, this is what we're going to do essentially. It's a proposal for what we're going to do to put this together. It's kind of like a business plan, but it's a project proposal. It says, outlines what you're going to do. So, this is a specific requirements. This is a project plan and an analysis proposal paper. In fact, you could probably write three or four pages and come up with, we're not doing it right now because it's going to cost too much money. Or, do we really need this? Here, we can outsource it to this company over here, and then you know, you, then you have to basically justify why we're going to do it this way, yada, yada. Don't write source code or provide a prototype or other implementation. Don't implement this thing. You're talking about this thing. So describe how you would become, how you would formulate your team. What type of people, and this is going to be a fairly small project. I couldn't imagine more than one or two people. I mean, maybe a UI designer. Maybe you're going to do an app interface to this, maybe. So now, if you're technical, you can use your technical background to imagine this dream system. If you're a business person, you can talk about maybe uh, a, a different angle that would come up. I'm, I'm a technical person, so I'm, I'm dreaming about all the different user interfaces I could come up with, a mobile interface, you know, and uh, all this other stuff I could add to this system to spec it out. Um, although, we don't have to worry about money in this scenario. This is the made-up world. Uh, sky's the limit, so it could cost a fortune and only, you know, add simple value to the company. Uh, so you don't have to be realistic in terms of money or expenses. However, try to be within, like, normal realm. I wouldn't hire, like, ten developers for this. Maybe one programmer, you know, maybe, maybe, actually, I'd probably take two or three, you know, I'd probably have a database built for it, maybe, and you can talk about maybe the UI designer, maybe a, you know, programmer, you know, to write it, maybe PHP or some web technology, scripting technology. So if your technical background is limited, then don't focus on that. <laughs> focus on the business components. If your business background is limited, then don't focus on that. Focus on the technology. So you have the freedom to take whatever angle you want to do with this. Because depending upon who you are, you're going to have different perspective in terms of what needs to get done. So... Number two, describe how you would formulate your team. Did I already do this already? I don't know. I already did number two. Number three, what steps will you take uh, in the analysis and design of the system? How are you going to analyze it? Well, all right, let me give me a few hints on this one here. How will you design the system? What major components will you include? There's a lot of companies, including ITU, that actually does this. They use surveys, you know. I'd send a survey out, maybe, you know, if you're the IT approach, send a survey out to the users and find out what they want, to the students and find out, or to the employees. And then uh, take a look at the existing system if you already have one. So if you want to do an existing system upgrade, you can take that approach. Or assume you don't have a system at all. Assume you don't have anything if you want to. And then build it from the network up if you wanted to. Or you can say, oh, we have a computer network already. So make up the resources that you want to work with for your scenario. Um, so you might, you know, send a prototype out, or maybe you want to go on the internet and do some research, or have a, a couple of people from the um, such and such department do a needs analysis or needs assessment or something. Or maybe you can go through your own personal use with the HR department and say, well, I think they need this, I think they need that, you know, and come up with your own list of criteria and stuff, so... What you come up with is based upon your user experience. Uh, so what timeline and processes will you use to complete this project? So you can put together sort of a mini project plan, but it starts you thinking about project plans. Well, what's a project plan? It usually has a task list with, yeah, like milestones. I want to know about your milestones. I want to know about your deliverables. 
you know, am I going to have to wait a year before this thing's over with? Is it going to take you a year? It's going to take you six months. How long is it going to take? And then, uh, realistically, how long is it going to take? Obviously, you don't have a boss breathing down your neck going, hey, it has to be done tomorrow. When can you have this done? You know, so you, you can make up your own boss breathing down your neck, saying, okay, you wanted this this fast, so this is what you're going to get for this fast. If you want to do it a little bit longer, this is what you're going to get, and this is how much it's going to cost you. If you want, you can do multiple different variations if you want. Uh, you don't have to come up with a project plan, obviously. Um, you don't have to do that at all. But if you want to, you can. So a simple project plan is needed to figure out what order the steps you'll take in and what sub-steps you'll take to involved in this project. And one of the milestones and checkpoints of the project plan, you do not need to use MS Project or develop a real project plan. You could simply create a chart, maybe, or a, a list. It says, you know, step number one, project, you know, task number one, um, hire developers. <laughs> You can't have anything done before you hire a developer. Hire a, a database architect. Hire a UI designer. Hire maybe you don't need them all at one time. Maybe you can hire the systems analyst first. Maybe you're the systems analyst, so you're going to take that first task. And then further down, you're going to implement the network or rent the or reserve the web space. Um, configure the web space, and then maybe you'll have a, you know, a couple more weeks down the road. Hire a developer. Uh, testing phases. Uh, think about all the different steps you could possibly go through in terms of creating this monster that you're putting together. So it doesn't have to be a formal project plan. Make up your own. In fact, some of the best project plans aren't done in Microsoft Project. They're just done on a on a bar napkin or they're, <laughs> they're done on a piece of scratch paper. So don't think about formalities here. Think about the concept. It's a thinking exercise. So how long will it take for the project to complete? Mm -hmm. What will it cost? Be as realistic as possible. But of course, accuracy is not a grading point. I don't care if your costs are wrong. If you told me you could do it for a dollar, well, if you already have the equipment, it only costs you a dollar for something, then yeah, I guess you could do it for a dollar. I don't care. Realistically, something like this, maybe two grand, three grand. Depends on how much in-house talent you have, actually. Because you're going to have to, maybe five grand, I don't know. Depends on how much time you're going to allocate for your developers to the project. So it could be done fairly cheap, actually. Um, depends on, are you going to, what are you, you going to buy, what are you going to outsource, kind of thing. Maybe that's kind of low, actually. I'm thinking maybe 20 grand, 30 grand, maybe, if you have to hire people. They're not, it's not going to take them a year to do this. A higher developer makes what, I don't know, 90, 100,000 a year, divided out by how many months in a year, figure out how many, you, know, you can use your own calculation for this. And you make your own numbers, like, you know, does a developer really cost 100 grand? Yeah, pretty decent average price is about 100 grand for a developer in the U.S. So, figure out 100 grand, so divide it out, maybe that's like 10 grand a month, like a two-month project, that's 20 grand maybe for one developer. Maybe, you know, because this, this is I don't know, work full time, probably is going to dedicate full time to this. If so, it probably won't take them one month to do this. So you're, you have to guess at a lot of these numbers, not to come up with it, but come up with the reasoning behind it. Just don't throw numbers out. It's going to cost 20000 for a developer. You can say, well, the average cost is blah, blah, blah. It's going to take them so much time. He's going to work on it part time with another person. And then you're really going to hire everybody all up front. And even paying salaries for people actually do this, and it's kind of stupid. Why hire everybody on day one when you don't need them on day one? They're just going to sit around and read books or, I don't know, play video games until you actually need them for something. So if you organize them correctly, then you have this person starting at this point, that person's, and then you delay the start depending upon the previous job. Make sure the previous stuff is ready before the guy starts. And then make sure he doesn't have too much slack time. So don't hire him full-time if you need a part-time guy kind of thing. So... Hire them all part time and then work them overtime. Probably not a good idea. So, because then you have a uh, cost expense associated with that. You can ramp it up if you want. You know, at a certain point, you can set some milestones. By this particular date, we have to have this running, that running, and that running. If not, then we're going to hire a third developer. That's part of your project plan. That's part of your planning as well. Or, you know, if we don't test well at this particular point, scrap the project completely. You can put that in there. You can put a, you can put a plan B in there that says if we don't get it running, we don't get this, we don't find that, then we take route B 
Route B is outsourcing or something. Or yeah. So be as complete as possible and make up any parameters that are missing. Make sure the project proposal is on the HR theme described above, which means you're automating, you're creating an employee self-service system. I don't want it on another system. It's too easy to go on the internet and find a bunch of project plans on all these different topics. Everyone's going to use HR and everyone's going to have a different system and a different approach to this midterm. No two approach. No two people in this room are going to think alike with this. You're going to have different approaches. So people with project management skills are going to take a total project management route on this. And technology people are going to be concentrated on the technology. Business people are going to be struggling with the technology going, well, we'll sort of see how that works, you know, and I expect your plan to be stronger on the business end versus the technology end. So everyone's going to have a different interpretation of what an HR system actually does as well, what features it has. You have to make up the features. Uh, XYZ company just said, hey, you know what, we want to have employees, so there's this traditional style of resource department, and we just want to put it on the internet. What are you going to offer? Our employees going to, you could spend a couple pages just on the feature list, <laughs> but make sure you don't spend too much time on the feature list, because you also want to be all inclusive, you want to cover everything. But if you focus a lot on the features, then maybe you're not going to have to focus too much on the development stuff. Just, if you're outsourcing this, that's like one paragraph. Outsource it, cost us this amount, went online, surveyed it, this is the average price, so it's going to cost us $15,000, we're going to outsource it. Paper done. Well, what are you going to want? You're going to have to put together something for the outsource company. You have to tell them what you want. So here's what we're going to outsource. And then you have two or three pages of feature spec. Think about HR. Okay, so employee request time off. <laughs> uh, over time, maybe. Maybe time clocking, time punching in, punching out, um, vacation, grievances, you know, uh, compensation reviews. Um, what about the current openings at IT or at whatever company you're, you're doing this for? You know, what, what, what are the job postings for, you know? Um, what about um, career growth? What about special training? What about, you know, if you think about HR, in fact, you can go online and search HR you'll find there's dozens and dozens of features that are associated with that department. And there's compliance test, you know, compliance stuff. Uh, there's tracking education. There's uh, uh, all sorts of different little things. If you can pick a company if you want, focus on that company. So HR for Acme Inc. or for ITU or for anything you want, really. So That's the midterm. Obviously, it's a take-home assignment. It's going to take you a lot of time in terms of the preparation. The writing, maybe not so much. Figuring out what you're going to write about. How are you going to write it? Maybe more time in preparing that. But if you tackle it like a real project, you know, I just say, hey, you, you know, hey, you, write me an HR. And what are you going to come back with? <laughs> Tell me, how long is it going to take? You know, I'm putting you in charge of this. You're the project manager slash engineer who's managing this entire project. Just do it for me. And, or put yourself in a consultant. This is what consultants do all the time, too, business consultants or analysts. They go out and they say, well, I need a payroll system. I need a this. I need a that. Okay. Well, here, I'll put one together for you. <laughs> the more accurate you are through time, the more money you make. A lot of software developers go out of business, actually, because on their first or second project, they go, oh, it'll take two weeks, and it'll cost 10000 What are you willing to pay? 10000 12000 Okay, 12000 be very cautious of outsourcing people or consultants that you tell them the price of what you're willing to spend and they say, okay, we can deliver that. It's usually they're just going to take your money and run in that particular case. What guarantee that you're going to actually deliver something? You know, that's actually kind of an interesting point there as well. So there's a lot of different problems and sub-issues associated with building a project. So. I can't tell you, I'm not going to tell you how long this would probably normally take or how much it would cost or what, you know, depends on the situation. You can come up with a dream world company, you know, that's, you have 20 developers on site that are here at your resource. Okay, you know, and sky's the limit on money and, you know, you can just make your own parameters up, essentially. It would be much harder if I gave you the parameters, so. Questions on the midterm exam?
take home, obviously, due on August 22nd. It's available at the EMS. It's available at a store near you on the EMS and in the vhacker.com. And yes, the CSLO is missing. So next week we'll go over the CSLO before the class starts. Yes. Ah. So instead of there being a human resource manager, let me open that back up again. Oops. It was in the assignment description. Instead of there being an employee sitting at a desk and you go into the employee HR department, you say, hey, I have a, I want to go on vacation. I want these days off. The Employee Self Service Center, internet website, you'd log on to the website and you'd request that you do it all electronically. It replaces the human sitting behind the desk. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's an application that's online that just supports employees. So it works with vacation and time off. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I got a bad report, performance review, and I want to dispute it. You know, so how do I file a dispute on my performance review? Um, or um, I'm looking for another career at this company. I don't want to stay in this job. What what else would I be qualified for? How do I move? You know, laterally. Support, Support for HR. Yeah, just think of anything that an HR department does. And then um, make it electronic. So, excellent question because I assumed everyone knew what an employee self service center. And self service has taken over traditional HR, by the way, these days, especially in big companies. In fact, I prefer it. I'd rather do it online. If there's, you know, how many times I have to provide proof of employment for discounts and stuff? I just go to the what, not for ITU, but I go to another school's website. <laughs> I log into the system. I can print out an ver employment verification form, or I can request a day off, or I can report a you know um, a problem with a student, or which you know maybe ITU should have one of these. Maybe if you come up with a good design, someone pick IT. Alex can pick IT as a theme. We'll hand it to the day. Maybe we could put this together for HR department. We actually need this system. So you could do a real system for for ITU, because you know how many students want to. You know, actually, this is another interesting thing too. You can do a student support system as well, where a student, let's say, for example, I just had a student. I don't think she's in this room, which is good. I, should, I shouldn't have said she. Um, he or she, students, who came to me earlier today with a financial problem, you know, like there was a problem with the bill. And he or she had already gone to the manager of the, of the XYZ department. and. They already spoke with this person and this person, but they're still having a problem. So she asked, he or she asked me, how can I escalate this? And I'm like, I have no idea. But if there were a support system where the student could log in and say, this happened, and I don't know how to resolve this thing. It's kind of like, um, what do I call it? Um, it's not like a, one of those te tell-on systems, you know, when you tell on somebody. Um, what do they call that? Yeah, it's not, well, it's a grievance system, but it's not a report without being, I was the one who reported it. Um, what do they call that? Anonymous? Yeah, it would be an anonymous, but they have something, I can't remember what it's called right now, where you tell on somebody. Um, you're a, um, oh, the word is not coming in my head right now. You're, you, uh, you know, it's people that narc on other people. I don't know, for yeah. lack of better words. Whistleblower. Say, whistleblower! It's like a whistleblower program. But this isn't, we don't have a whistleblower program here, actually. If we, if HR, you could add in your HR employee self-service program, you can add a whistleblower utility in there. Whistleblowing, for those people who aren't familiar with it. You don't walk into HR department and say, hey, I have a problem with Alex. <laughs> you know, blah, 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 blah. And not only is Alex going to find out that I have a problem with him, but... I'm telling it to someone. I might have someone. I have a problem with this guy over here too. Not only are people are going to know about. I want to be an anonymous. You know, I, I you know, I don't want people to know this, so I can go online and say, you know, hey, this is a user X Y Z. That Alex person, man, yada yada yada, right? And then they're not going to know who that came from. It's like whistleblowing. Well, it is whistleblowing. Oh, so and so is. Uh, taking home toilet paper from the bathroom. Actually, this happens at companies. People steal office supplies and toilet paper and paper towels and stuff. And then they have whistleblowing programs where you write a message in.
or you put a little note and you put it in a Dropbox. But then people see you putting notes in Dropboxes. So the employee self-service system is much better for that because they can't see you typing in the, in, the, in the message. So you have a little Dropbox. Or a student who has a grievance or a faculty member who has a grievance or, you know, that would actually solve a lot of problems from a grievance perspective. But what about an employee that is going to be late for class? What about me? What, what, what if I take a day off? You know, I have to go shuffle my mom around because Bart goes on strike, which actually recently I had to call like three different people. You know, I'm like, hey, uh, I can't make it to class today. You know, I mean, I know well enough I can send an announcement out to you guys, but what if, you know, you're brand new to IT, you don't know there's an announcement feature, you know. So someone invent one for, eight, for, uh, for ITU, and then um, we can have all sorts of new self-service features. So, but that's what the assignment's about. Um, you know, use it as your own personal project for a company you might be familiar with, or make up a company. Don't make up a company at all. Just make a generic one you're going to sell. So. All right, I'm going to stop this because it's...